Howdy folks. It's a beautiful Sunday morning down here in paradise. So I thought on this beautiful day I'd tell you a, uh, a story. That's why I call it story time. This is the next episode. I think I'm up to episode 43-ish, maybe 44. I don't know. We're going to find out here shortly. But uh, I reckon this took place back in the late 90s, probably 99, around that, that time period. I lived in uh, Bath County, Virginia. If you've heard me talk about that before, it's because that place was like Mayberry. It was pretty much uh, lower class and upper class. There was really no middle class in Bath County, Virginia, but it was a beautiful place. It's very, very low. I think at the time, the population of the whole county was around 5,000 people, but it was real, real large county. A lot of natural forest and just, just, just a lot of nature. Real, real lovely place. But uh, anyway, so I, you know, I was able to get a, a, an apartment above a mom and pop gas station. When I say mom and pop gas station, this is as, as mom and pop as you can get. Just, you know, you go in there and get your SpaghettiOs and, you know, 10, you know, 10 gallons of gas, what have you, and maybe a bag of potato chips, one of them kind of places. So, uh, so I lived up top and there was another lady who was a school teacher, she lived in the apartment kind of like just slightly below me and off to the left. And then the gas station was downstairs. And then off to the right, it's true to fashion in the old days, they had a detached garage, you know, for the mechanic to, you know, change tires, whatever he was doing. So I used to park on the other side of this detached garage. And uh, the, the, the landlord, there's two of them, I forget the lady's name, uh, she wasn't too nice, but the, the husband was real nice. His old fellow named Boyd, and uh, but when he would cut the grass, he would just cut the grass. There was no weed whacking around the edges and everything. So there was some asphalt, some concrete pads, and the grass was always real tall around those areas. So uh, there's a reason I'm, I'm leading up to this. But uh, so I, the one thing I didn't like about living in that little tiny apartment was. Uh, no washer and dryer. You had to go into town. So I'd go into town usually on a Sunday and go do my laundry, which I, ne I never never liked going to laundry. Now. But so I, I would suck it up every once in a while. So this one particular day, I just, I could keep it simple. You know, they don't kiss me out to keep it simple, stupid. That's what I, I did back then. So I just put all my dirty clothes in two big black trash bags. So on the side, in the front side of that detached garage, there was one of those old tire racks where they would put tires on. There was no tires on it, but it, it created a little bit of, uh, I guess, obstruction from vision, the way, the way it was set up and everything. So as I'm walking past that tire rack, I got a big bag of clothes in my left hand and a big bag of clothes in my right hand. So as I walk by that tire rack, out of the blue, I see this, boom! This big old rattlesnake hits the bag that I'm holding. It would have had me, for sure, had I not had the, uh, hold, holding that bag in my left hand. So I jump back, and I'm like, oh, crap, you know? So I've seen rattlesnakes on TV and stuff like that. I've never seen one up in person, and you know, I, I, I don't care to see one ever again after that episode. But, uh... So my girlfriend at the time, her name was Natalie, she was coming out of the apartment behind me and she grew up there and was a certified redneck. So I knew she, she could identify it. And uh, so I asked her and I, you know, I could hear the tail rattling, you know, so I, you know, I'm not the village idiot, but I could figure, you know, it just looked so much different than what I was used to. It was real black and velvety and I had never seen that on TV. So I talked to her, and she's like, she's like, yeah, they usually get like that when they had just shed, and they're kind of like black and velvety. So I'm like, oh crap. So I, uh, I said, keep an eye on it. I said, there was a, a older redneck lived two doors down. His name was Kenny something. So I go knock on his door, and, and, and you know, I tell him the problem. I said, you know, I'm just a Yankee. Do you know how to dispatch this? And he goes, yeah, yeah. I'll be right there. So he goes in his shed and gets a hoe 
So he comes over and he starts taunting this rattlesnake and then whoosh, lops the head right off this rattlesnake. He picks it up and it was about a four and a half footer. He goes, that's a pretty good sized rattlesnake and all this. He's, you know, talking and we're looking at it and everything. And then right then Natalie says, Kitty, there's another snake at your feet. And he's kind of chuckling. She goes, no, I'm telling you, there's another snake. So he puts that one down and sure as heck, there's a copperhead right in that tall grass where the landlord never weed whacked. And uh, so he's got the hoe and he starts taunting that one and whoop, lops the head off of that one. Copperhead and a rattlesnake. Right where the path I was walking to to go to my vehicle. So uh, so we get to talking and this guy Kenny says, he goes, I'm, I'm telling you, because I don't want to scare you or anything. He goes, but uh, they travel in pairs. He says the female rattlesnake's going to be yellowish in color, have some yellow on her. And uh, I'm like, oh, great. You know, so um, he said, within two weeks, I'm telling you, she's going to be around here. Well, two weeks to the day, they killed the female rattlesnake when I was at work at the bottom of my stairwell, stairway to, to go into the apartment. So it wasn't long after that that uh, G Money decided it was time to uh, high step it out of town and get to safer country. So uh, that's what happened. So I moved to safer country that has Category 5 hurricanes. Go figure that one out. I guess you're not safe anywhere you go. But anyway, that's story time. The next edition, snakes can kill you. Thank God. I don't know. Thank God I'm still around to talk to tell the story. Peace out, folks. Jail bait and tackle outdoors.